Okay guys, uh, today I thought I'd show a wee brief video um, about the uh, Hantac software uh, and the version in particular I'm referring to is uh, the one that will provide you with this icon. Uh, this is for the, uh, the handheld series, the other icon on my laptop there you can interface it with your laptop or PC whatever if you choose. I don't use that function very much but <clears throat> the old school icon uh, for the uh, 1008 used to be very very similar to this. I've since removed it from a desktop because I'll exclusively use this one but this is actually a version uh, 1.0.30 and why I won't do I want to discuss this particular version because this version actually gives you facility to have um, waveform uh, it has a built-in uh, automotive waveform library right so when the uh, when the software actually opens up I'll come to this page here giving you a couple of options so click on the icon here it gives you the option for um, the, the, the uh, generator function um, the standard automotive or sorry the standard oscilloscope uh, software or you can actually use the vehicle diagnosis which again basically pulls up the option for these reference waveforms now keep in mind guys they're just generic right let me say that again just to get the point across they're just generic they're not model or model year uh, specific they're just generic giving you an example right so there's a couple of different um uh, types of uh, waveform examples that you can actually pull up um, but let's go with sensors for example and let's go with camshaft and I'll give you a couple of different options for the camshaft you can actually open them all up and it gives you give you some idea what you're looking at and keep in mind this software is free guys you can find out there um, no sure if it's on the hand tech manufacturer website still or you can find it just go digging for it hand tech uh, 1008 version 1.0.30 right uh, but, uh, so we got weird here as I said we're going to look at the camshaft it actually gives you you can see there's icons up here camshaft hall effect that one there there's also another one just below it that says camshaft hall effect slightly different icon but um anyway they both provide an example but I can assure you this is the better of the two so if you click on it <coughs> double click on it, I guess it actually opens up um, scope and it will set your uh, voltage and time base there's presets so that they basically are presets it provides you with a waveform example this is a Hall Effect camshaft. Now you'll notice some of the sharper eyes upon this screen will actually notice this is on a 5 volt scale. So the Graticule, every unit on the Graticule is uh, 5 volts. So this is a Hall Effect that's providing a 12 volt square wave, right? We but odd, I'm used to cars that provide 5 volts. I think there's some other voltage out there, references uh, 8 volts. 12 volts, 5 volts, so anyway, maybe some others, I don't know. Um, but my car is certainly a 5 volt. So this is useful in the sense that it gives you um, an idea what to expect. Will it be exactly like your car? No. Well, it has no idea what model year and again, even the engine configuration, the number of cylinders and whatnot are going to obviously alter what this will look like. But it's a starting point, right? It's all built into the software and it gives you some notion of what to expect. I mean, what's the point in going out and trying to scope your car if you think the sensor has failed, if you really have no idea what to expect? First things first, have some expectation of what you're going to look at, right? Now, I realize not everybody is going to have the factory manual to their vehicles. I do. I've printed this reference here and this is what I expect to see when we actually put the scope on the, uh, on the car. I've used the camshaft uh, sensor as an example because I'm a lazy bastard and it's easy to access, right? So let's see if we can make some sense of this. Again, we can step through the steps. 
step through the, the procedure, how you open up, how you access the relevant sensor that you're interested in, and then we'll see how this actually compares to what we actually see on the car. Again, it sets to some presettings. Take presettings with a grain of salt, guys. I'm not a big presetting guy, but it might be helpful, especially if you're on the steep end of the learning curve, right? So let's go into the car. It's just running in demo mode at the moment. Um, and we'll see uh, if this is gonna be of really any use to us. Um, this also, if you buy the handhelds, I think it is the 2D82, 84, 82 I think it is, you get the automotive package. This software can actually build, be built into the, the uh, handheld as well. But um, why pay extra for it when you can download this free and all the data is actually there, right? And it, as I said, it is useful. Is it gonna be useful to the professional mechanic? No. Is it gonna be useful to the weekender like myself? Yeah, it kinda is useful. You can get some idea of what you're looking at and it just helps enhance your understanding for um, different sensors, different actuators, different uh, bus signals and stuff like that are all detailed on there. Again, again, just to give you some idea of what to expect when you're dealing with a car. Not gospel, but a starting point. I meant to mention uh, earlier in the video, guys, um, once the reference waveform has uh, served its purpose or your screen is getting too busy, um, you can clear the reference waveform just simply by selecting the function there. Uh, clear reference and it will dump it from your screen or just click on it again and it can bring it back at any uh, at any given point in time Okay, so I'm out in the garage here guys I've just got the uh, image from a little laptop because it's a tiny screen on my tele here in the garage and uh, If you've got the wiring diagram so much the better, right? But if you don't that's okay, too, right? You, typically you're only dealing with a two or three wire uh, sensor when it comes to uh, cam position sensors either uh, variable reluctance, um, magneto resistive type, Hall effect, which is the case here, right? So you'll be looking at three wires. So first things first, you can hear the humming in the car, make sure the ignition is actually turned on. Can we make any sense of these three wires, even if we don't have the, uh, even if we don't have the wiring diagram? Well, let's see, right? So let's, I'll just probe them. I can't show you the screen and me probing these at the same time. So I'll just work from uh, from left to right here and just keep an eye on the screen here, guys. I'm just pushing the, uh, the probe in. So that's clearly jumped up uh, to two and a half graticules. So that'd be, that would be a 12 volt reference that we have. Back to the connector. So we know we have a 12 volt reference. Um, there's a ground. And there's a five volt reference coming from the uh, from the engine control module, so we know that's 12. So this is either a ground or it'll be the five volts, but it could be zero as well. I appreciate guys that depending on where the camshaft actually is stopped in its rotation, uh, the reluctor that's on the end of the camshaft that the sensor itself at the end of this connector actually senses uh, will either have. 5 volt reference or pull the 5 volt to ground right so it'll be it'll be one of these two pins so again let's see if we can make sense of the display so we're at pretty much the zero line there just pushing in the pin now i don't know if you noticed that let, let me show you that again watch the signal line there relative to the channel marker there guys did you notice it raised up just a fraction there Watch the channel marker and the reference line. See how it dropped down there? And now it's clearly floating. You can see on the line, it's a bit wavy there. So I suspect that that is the five volt line that will get pulled to ground. So let's go to the other one, which I suspect is the ground. It's a black wire. That's kind of making me think it is in fact the ground line. Apparently I don't have a good connection here. There we go, that looks solid. So again, look at the channel marker there, the little one there, guys, I realize I'm a wee bit far away. Let me zoom up so you can see it a bit better. It'll be shaky, but you can see it a bit better. So I've retracted the pin. And that's N, and there's really no change. Again, to make my point, let me go back to the reference, uh, to the which I believe is the five volt reference line here. Sorry, 
There you go so you can see it. So just watch the channel marker. That's floating, and I believe that is the signal ground. It's just slightly above the true ground line. Okay, so that, that's the point I'm trying to make here. So let's start the car and see if we can uh, actually uh, get an image here. Uh, I've made one significant change to my setup here, guys. You'll notice my probe is no longer on the connector there at the sensor itself. It's at the, uh, the ECU here. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So let's see if we can get a decent image after I've had a fair bit of grief here. Anybody who owns a hand tech at 1008 will know, likely know what I'm talking about already. Well, let's see if we can get an image. Recording here on the screen, and you can see I need to obviously adjust the time base a wee bit here, guys. Uh, gotta try and get this in focus, otherwise, I'm gonna get grief. So, I'm gonna uh, see if I can capture a wee bit more of the image because there's not quite enough on screen there. From 50 milliseconds, I see we got too much. Okay, let's hold that image. Let me shut. So, car. although what we see on screen is not identical to the reference waveform, obviously that's just because of the timing of the capture. Okay, so why did I make the change to the setup here and actually move my probe to near the ECU? Um, appreciate that the sensor here guys okay, is right next to the ignition coil so cylinders are obviously mounted here under the cover under the intake cover and uh, the 1008 does not like ignition noise of any shape or form I can assure you high tension uh, noise that makes its way into this will lock up the program anybody who's dealt with the 1008 is probably well aware of this and it's extremely frustrating so it can actually stop you in your tracks, but um, I can just make the suggestion that uh, a simple way of actually avoiding that is remotely locate the uh, the coax and your pins uh, when you're actually taking a measurement, i.e. at the engine control module in this case, so you get a bit of distance between your coax, which is essentially acting as an antenna. It's picking up the high tension noise and actually locking up programming frustrating the hell out of you. it can be very frustrating now, it's been some time since i've done this kind of measurement with the 1008 and i completely forgot about that but again there is a workaround just put your probe remote right so i hope that made some sense here guys um let me just go back i can show you on the big tally here i guess uh again the point to this is that there's uh all kinds of all kinds of um waveforms actually available to you although they are generic let's just take a look at the bus here uh, the CAN bus is an example that some of you will be familiar with right obviously two channel example here and uh, again the two channels are automatically set up there yeah it certainly has its value there guys again available on the uh, uh, the Hantec 1.0.30 version um, again, the icon presents a wee bit differently on your screen, and uh, that's the advantage of this, is there is some automotive reference waveforms for you. Generic as they may be, still of some value to the hobbyist and weekender like myself, right? So, the 1008, it's got idiosyncrasies and uh, can be extremely challenging and test your patience at times, but on balance, still a neat rig. I like it. That's it, boys. Cheers.